Hi everyone, I'm about to glaze over my piece of furniture which I've just painted for my video on my Vicky's Vintage uh, YouTube channel and I thought I'd just show you my glazing technique. This is straight from the Annie Stone book and I'll show you what I'm about to do. All you need to do is just get some Annie Stone dark wax, some turps, a bowl you don't care about to mix it in and a paintbrush and a clean rag. And you must clear wax your piece of furniture before you do this technique because you don't want to ruin your painted furniture. You may struggle to take this uh, dark wax glaze off. So clear wax as you would normally do first of all. Then you need your Annie Sloan soft wax in dark and some turps. And I'm going to use a tablespoon measurer. A tablespoon would probably take you quite a long way. So I have a tablespoon here. I might have to use my thumb in a second. And uh, this bowl I really don't care about anymore. It's an old soup bowl. Ugh, gross. So I'm going to use that to stir in a second. And because I need two hands, I'm going to tell you now, I'm going to pour a tablespoon of turps like spirits into this spoon measurer and pour it in. So it's poured in and the idea is that you need equal amounts of each. So I'm going to stir that and the wax will melt. So I'm going to stir this and the wax will just disintegrate into the turps. It really is a good idea to test on a little piece of furniture or piece of wood don't really care about. I never did, I just went ahead and just did a project. I like to dive into it. So I've got my glaze and my paintbrush and my rag. <laughs> I've put that down somewhere. So this is a bit I can't wait for. So I think I've got some on there. Yes I do, but I'll grab a little bit more just to dab in. So you can see that, well possibly <laughs> from there, that when you get the brush into it, the darker bits they tend to stick into the crevices and that is exactly what we want. So it will look like antique dust collected in the crevices. So just really get in there. So you grab your clean cloth, a lint free cloth and just go over it. And it's quite pitted in, uh, in the background here. So I'm so glad it is because it adds even more interesting detail. So I'm gonna take off wherever I can off the top surface because it wouldn't be as dirty in those bits. So if you can just see there close up, these details really stand out. It's almost like a 3D effect. It's very wow. And this is the pitted effect here. I just think that's fantastic. I'm just gonna go over that. And if you think there's just too much uh, antique glazing there, just go over it with your clean rag and more clear um, wax. So I really think that's fascinating. So I'm just gonna do the rest now. So I've just been grabbing my paintbrush, the glaze, and just going over it in every direction to, so I can get it really stuck in my brush strokes. In fact, I wrote a blog on this over a year ago and um, it just, because I, I couldn't quite understand Annie Sloan at the time um, because I was just obsessed with being the perfect um, perfect brushstroke painter and I was scared of um, I ne I'd never used the, the wax at the time and once I did I just totally got it so some people may just want to leave that as it is I'm not going to do that I think that is extreme I hope this is really useful to, for, for people because I was I just like I said before in another video I did hours of research driving myself mad so I've just stepped back, I haven't taken enough off yet, but just to show you the difference, you've got a antique cream just there, and that is the dark wax side. So I'm just going to take most of that off. 